income from the show too. On top of that, he was getting endorsements and the 30 million loan that they took and the, but like you said, if you, he was blowing crazily too. So you're right. Maybe, maybe there's nothing left. I guess you never know. It's just like, if it's really, they have no money, then anyone's going to be humbled and brought to their knees broke. But if they, they somehow make it through and their houses don't change and their cars don't change, that's my big thing. I'm going to watch to see, you know, is, you know, Savannah and Chase, are they really living in the same homes? Are they still driving the same cars? Because that would be hard to keep up with just the podcast. Yeah. And that's the thing you can't really, it's kind of, you can't feel that bad when they're saying the same home. It's like, what is your definition of? I, and also before we wrap up, I mean, you, I look at Nanny Faye also, and she's a certain age. I mean, there's so much press out there. Chase, Savannah, Grayson, we're speaking like, how does Nanny Faye feel about this? And I mean, just doing the numbers, you may not be around when your son gets out of jail. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, and that's her whole heart and soul. Um, she does have another son, though. But I, I don't know. She, yeah, that's got to be hard because she is the pillar of for Todd and Todd for her. So, yeah, you're right. I didn't think about Nanny Faye. She's right. He thinks he is Jesus himself. So she, I'm sure, thinks he's, you know, a national hero as well. So sadly, she's got that mother's love that is just unwavering. Wow. Can you oh, You've been I mean, making, I mean, you, you really, I, I give you, I, like I said, I give you so much credit. I worked with a very narcissist. I mean, people that listen to my podcast have heard it at nauseum, but I worked with someone that has similar traits to Todd and it is very scary because they just have those minds where you're living your life. You don't even think about it. All of a sudden they pop up with cease and desist and legal things. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, lots of times shit that doesn't mean anything, but it's like, they never leave you alone. You know, and I give you credit. I mean, by speaking up today, you're going to help somebody else who works for a narcissistic boss, narcissistic in-laws or a spouse, um, just to have the strength to keep going, keep fighting. And I mean, I've seen it in my case and I've seen it in this. I mean, karma it is scary. Karma doesn't miss. It's, it doesn't miss. It doesn't miss. It's really, it may take a lot longer. Like you suffered for a decade. I did. But man, I mean, you talk about publicly, everybody knows now what they're like. And about you everyone. have and you have to be, I mean, I hate to say it, like I'm sorry. I would you have to be thrilled. You have to be happy, elated that these yeah. I mean, they can't bother you from behind bars. Yes. You don't know how many countless nights when they came here to Delaware to serve me, like I moved out of state to get away. So I am thrilled. I was wondering what am I going to do? Just what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? I've had season to assist. He tried to present me with a gag order. Thank God I didn't sign it because now I wouldn't be able to talk. Everything you can think of, every court, you know, threats. Um, he shut off my phone after I divorced. Didn't even give me a chance for the ink to dry. And, you know, they just he just is crazy. He just little, any control he could have, he did it. And um, I'm so happy. I'm not going to lie. I, I am that I can have peace. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine because I didn't think this day would come. And I think that's what most of us thought. And I think the reason they thought they could get away with it, everyone thought they were getting away with it. I think even Mark, if you ask anyone that's dealt with the narcissist, they never get caught. It's rare that people really catch on to them because they do a lot of crazy things to people and nobody says anything. So it's shocking this actually happened because he'd gotten away with so much. You should write a book. I mean, honestly, you really Seriously. should. You, you should write a book and help others. Um, because your story is an international one. And um, yeah, we give you a lot of credit. We're hoping to hear from Mark too, because it's mm -hmm. what you guys went through. People should be aware because they're very charming. Like you said at first, it's a love mm -hmm. bomb at first. Mm -hmm. It's your wonderful gifts, you know, dinners, and you're going to be on a TV show and all these things until you go, mm, this seems weird that you're being served and I need boundaries. Yeah. And then, yeah. And you talk about all of them, the, 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 Instagram people and the Facebook people that he had charge my account and just say everything bad because he had said I was this terrible person and messages of people that don't even know you thinking you just scammed their son and drugged him. He literally, they went so far as to lying in court to say that Kyle was drugged when he signed the divorce, that I had known he was on drugs. 
uh, either I was aware of the drug or presented him with the drugs and allowed him to sign a divorce decree. I've never even smoked a cigarette in my life. Todd is very aware that I'm like by the book. So such a law-abiding citizen. I was so dumb that I thought that Kyle's drugs was baking soda because he told me he was baking soda to clean his tools. Hmm. How dumb. And I was like, well, why is it out of the box? Oh, you know, I got to really clean the tools. I, I know you use it all the time for baking because I had a bakery at the time. That's how dumb. So it took me a while to catch on. You, If you don't do drug one-on-one, you don't know what. I mean, there's, and I'm so glad so many people are talking about people that are functioning users because that needs to be shown that it is not something where you see on TV where people think, oh, he was on drugs. So he was just probably laid up in the house and couldn't wake up. So you're married to a drug addict. It's like, idiots, he was working. He was cleaning. He was cooking. He was alert. He was not, he didn't have any needles like marks in his hand in his hand it's even like i've been i don't even know what people look like when they're on coke but you go out with some i've been out with friends or who i guess i've done a fair amount of coke anyway they can point out to you people and i would never know they were on coke they're like oh that you can tell by their the pupils dilated in there i'm like god i never even would have known they just seem like complete <laughs> you know you don't even know you don't you don't, know. You don't. Unless you're in it, like you said, if you're if you're in it and you use, if you know, yeah. You know. If you use it, you know it. I took me a long time, so sorry, but sure, I, didn't know. I wouldn't know either. I wouldn't know either. Yeah. Although yeah. people a lot of times think I'm on coke, which I'm not, because I'm <laughs> talking fast and I've got sure? a lot. I seriously, people have come over to me when I'm out and said, "Hook me up," and I'm like, <laughs> multiple times, and I'm like, "You are." So far up the, no judgment, but you are barking up the wrong tree over here. I can get you an Ozempic shot, but I am not on coke. <laughs> that I that I can help you with. I can help you with a lot of other things. I cannot help you with any type of drugs like that. Lexi, thank you. I, I mean, I know. You, do you have anything else? I mean, I just, I hate taking, I mean, you've been so generous with your time, really. Any, right. No, that's everything. Thank you guys so much. It was great meeting with you all. I'm glad I was able to share the story. And like you said, I hope it can help another person that's been in narcissistic in-law situation or marriage. And, and and you know, Kyle, oh. just being married to Kyle was enough because he was had his own set of issues. So having a father on top of that, I'm just glad I'm out of it. And I hope anybody that's dealing with it and being a minority, being the odd one out, I did glad that I did have Chloe there because at least we were, she was a baby then, but it, it was some sort of a support <laughs> that I wasn't the only, you know, black person in the family, right? It helps. So it was, it's great. I like it. And I'm glad I learned from it. That's and we'll tag it. you when this comes out too yeah. and share. It's going to probably come out in like a few weeks, but we'll, All right. spread. like, hopefully it will help. I, I totally agree. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you can call me a lady any day you want. To, lady. <laughs> okay, lady. <laughs> I admit that I'm gay. Okay, so there you go. Yes, okay, good, good. There's no uh, Kyle. Right. There's no uh, Todd Chrisley here. There's we have no Todding. No. Okay, good. Well, no Todding. <laughs> okay, Bye, good to know. Come back.